being in youth ministry, we can ju often just jump in and just try to figure it out as we go along without any strategy. Today, I want to help you to have a strategy that helps you move forward in youth ministry. I jumped into youth ministry, I just kind of got thrown into the deep end and I'm just out there trying to figure it out. I had some volunteers and they were helping me because they've been around for a while. I'm straight out of college and I had really no idea what I was doing. I knew how to put together a message and I knew how to run some games, but I didn't have a strategy about how to move students forward. And I got, uh, at the time, this is many years ago, Dan Spader and Sun Life had these eight steps that included creating a loving atmosphere and all these different things. And then I went to, a few years later, I went to Willow Creek Conference where uh, I learned their strategy and I tried to employ some of that into my ministry. Uh, Doug Fields wrote a book called Purpose Driven Youth Ministry and he had these five circles and they all had words and uh, I tried to employ some of that when I was a youth pastor in Oregon. Uh, I took kind of four words within a mission, vision statement, uh, leading middle schoolers into a relationship with Jesus that's real personal and growing. And all of those kind of had the same type of thing. So I've, over the years, I've taken all of these words and, and I, I think they all kind of boil down to the same areas. Uh, but I, I've put it into this full circle strategy I want to walk you through today. And hopefully this will give you a really kind of hands-on way to move your students from where they are forward so that you can win with them and they can have wins spiritually and and emotionally intelligently with you. So let's check it take a look at this. So this is what I call the full circle student ministry strategy. It's strategic steps moving students forward. This is what I like to tell when, I, when I'm working with the volunteers. I say our big win is when a student takes a step towards owning their faith, wherever they are. And part of this, I, I, I remember uh, Kenny and L. Campbell with uh, Grow Curriculum and Stuff You Can Use. They're phenomenal uh, leaders in, in youth ministry. They were middle school pastors for a long time, worked with Orange for a number of years, and then started their own uh, grow curriculum. Anyhow, this is one of the things that I, I grabbed from them and I and I loved this this statement because that is a significant thing. If you've ever read uh, the Andy Stanley's book, Seven Principles of Effective Ministry, uh, they talk he talks about this, the the wins, finding the wins. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend that book. It's fantastic. I'll put the link in the in the notes uh, for that book, but he talks about how we need to clearly communicate what the win is and constantly talk about that. So everybody knows what the win is. So there's no question. And the big win in student ministry should be when a student takes a step towards owning their faith. And that doesn't it, it, it doesn't matter where they're at, wherever they are on the journey, helping them to take a step further towards owning their faith completely is what we should be doing. So this full circle strategy is what I wanna walk you through, moving students from where they are to their next step. So the first step is outreach, and this is just a 30,000 foot view, right? So outreach, whether it's on your campus or it's out in the community or your students understanding how to share their faith, there's some level of bringing students to understanding who Jesus is and taking that step. Once they, they are part of an outreach, maybe they are introduced to Jesus and they say yes to Jesus for the first time, or they're, they're still curious, but they, they have broken down the barrier of connecting to the church in some fashion. Then you want to move them towards a service whether that's a Sunday service or it's a midweek service somewhere else, getting them involved in some kind of service. And I'm not talking about acts of service, but like a youth group, if you will, or a student ministry service. You want them connected there where you are sharing Jesus, where it's, it's kind of an 
it, it front door is in a sense after an outreach where it's they're not going to come in and go, this is totally foreign to me. There might be singing and worship, uh, but you'll pl probably play some games and uh, a message is being given. But it's friendly, visitor friendly. It's, a, it's an open environment. Uh, so for your students who currently attend, easy for their friends to invite them. Hey, come check this out. It's pretty cool. You came to our event that we did. Come with me to Sunday or Wednesday or whatever it is and see what we're doing. It's a lot of fun. Uh, from your service, you want to get students connected into small groups, whatever that looks like. It could be by gender or grade or school or region, uh, area, whatever, uh, and lots of ways. I've seen small groups work in so many different ways. I don't think there's one way to do small groups. And some sometimes those groups are for like sixth grade through 12th grade and they stay together. Sometimes it's like a 10 week small group experience where you're going through a specific study. Could, again, all sorts of ways to make small groups happen, but it, the idea is that it moves from circles, uh, rows to circles, and there's a place for them to be connected and belong. Uh, you know, it's easy to walk into a room filled with students and kind of come in late, leave early so you're not really noticed, uh, or nobody talks to you, even if it's a, uh, a smaller group. And then, but in a small group, whatever that looks like, and it could be D groups, life groups, we, you have community groups have all sorts of names to them, right? But the idea is that it's small and uh, the key is being small, but it's a place where they are known and, and be, can be connected to another group of students and leaders. It's a place where they feel like if they're not there, it's noticed that they're not there and leaders and other students will reach out and say, hey, we missed you at small groups. Some place where they feel connected and belong. Everybody wants to belong to something greater than themselves. And that's small groups, what small groups is all about. Once they're connected into small groups, you want to get them into serve teams. And, and it, teams serving, I believe, is best done with others, right? So whether it's you as a leader uh, or with other students or both, doing that together is, is always a really great thing. Now, I'm not saying don't encourage students to go out and serve on their own. I think we should absolutely encourage to go st serve on their own. But having some sort of serve teams, and that can look like all sorts of things, right? It could be in your student ministry, like a first time guest, uh, team or check-in team or the program team. So you have students that do the games and announcements and all that stuff. Uh, I, I know, I remember uh, at one of my, one church that I was serving at, I created this game team with students and a couple of adult leaders who led the thing. I kind of did the overview of what it's all about and why we do games and ministry and all of that. Uh, by the way, if you want to go to the link in the notes there, you can see I have created a book on games, an ebook on games. It's a free thing for you. Would love to just give that to you as a as a gift. Uh, that's in the notes there. Uh, games, uh, you know why you should. I think you should do games. Uh, how to create games out of nothing, and uh, there's a, a number of no prep and low prep games included in there as well as 15 best practices for, for crushing your games and making them the best possible. And anyhow, anyhow, back to what I was saying. So we we gave the game section over to students, uh, kind of facilitated by these adults, but the students owned it. Now, it wasn't as great as and polished as it was when our adults were leading it, but the students loved having their peers up on stage. And... Those students own that, but it could be serving in, you know, parking lot uh, greeters. You know, people make their decision on a church in their first 30 seconds. You pull into a parking lot at a church for your first time and there's friendly faces outside welcoming you, pointing you in the right direction of where you should park and all that stuff. That's a significant thing. Or it could be as greeters in the church or ushers or whatever, you're, uh, on the worship team, all sorts of opportunities for students to serve or serving in kids' ministry. But students need 
that chance to serve. Uh, there's research that, that shows that anywhere from 50 to 88% of students when they graduate high school leave their faith because they don't know, they're, they're not connected. And getting them plugged into serving and having a, a heart of service is a significant piece that this research has shown to flip that and make it so that students are, are more connected to the church and the heart of God and are less likely to leave the church. Another piece of that is being involved in what many of us call big church, uh, but having some sort of connection to the main service, whether that's going to a service on a Sunday morning uh, or a weekend service, whatever, uh, or, or some other connection to where there's not this foreign service that they go to once they graduate high school and go into college or the workforce or the military or they just move or whatever. Um, anyhow, those are two, two major things that help them. But surf teams are so significant. Then plugging them into some sort of student leadership. Now, what that looks like, we'll talk about all of these things in more specifics uh, on, on another podcast. But getting them involved in some sort of student leadership, whether it's a group that is specifically invited or you open it up and invite students to be in involved, it's a higher level of commitment. It's it's getting them plugged in and, and in the service stuff, but they're owning the youth ministry. They're getting involved with planning the outreach event that's coming up and they help to promote that outreach and even execute it like they're part of leading the games or whatever for the outreach event that you're doing and what happens is they invite their friends and you can see that they're now inviting their friends to that outreach and they've now come full circle and all of a sudden that student who is inviting their friends to the outreach that they're involved in and they go, hey, afterwards, like, what'd you think about the event? You know, they get to talk about that. They're equipped and sharing their faith with them. And then they invite their friends to come to a service. So you can see where that's a full circle, but the steps are key, right? Remember, our big win is when a student takes a step towards owning their faith, whatever that looks like. It could be owning their faith for the first time, or it could be, uh, you know, going, I'm going to, I'm going to start following Jesus closer. I need, I need to stop being on the fence. I need to get plugged into a small group. That could, that's a step. I need to start having this outward focus where I'm serving others. I need to be more committed to the, to the ministry and the body of Christ by being involved in leadership. So all of those steps towards owning their faith to becoming a fully devoted follower of Christ, that is what our job is to help students walk them through that. That's discipleship, right? We want to get students from where they are to the next step. That's the big win. So that was kind of this quick overview of student ministry strategy. I really hope that this was helpful for you. Now, I would love if you want to have some time to talk more about this, uh, I would encourage you if you want to jump over to ericwithak.com and uh, book a free uh, 45 minute uh, coaching call and see if maybe a coaching relationship would be something you would be interested in doing. I'd love to do that with you. Uh, talk about what that could look like. Jump over to ericwithak.com and you'll see uh, uh, where, where you can book that call. Would love to connect with you and encourage you and pray for you. Uh, I hope today was helpful. And uh, would you do me a favor? Would you click that like button, the subscribe button, all that stuff? Uh, throw in any comments. Matter of fact, today, if you could answer this question, what's one of those areas, one of those five steps that you feel like you need to work on the most? Would you put that in the comments? I would love to hear what you need to work on the most because that will help me in working on future podcasts and, uh, and really focusing on what's going to be most helpful for you as you continue to tune into these podcasts. All right, that's all I have for today. God bless you. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next week.